assalamu alaikum everyone welcome back to school management system tutorials today is our lecture number 33 and in today's lecture i'm going to discuss uh, about the results window once again but in a static manner right uh, what why i am doing this let me first tell you the reason in the previous lectures we have seen uh, the dynamic generation of the results but that was okay with respect to the software but it that was not okay with respect to the crystal report okay so uh, it is very uh, hectic and tedious task uh, to generate crystal report dynamically with respect to separate or different classes so that's why i have decided to generate uh, the results window once again with in the static manner uh, in the normal manner that we ha that we are uh, using throughout the software one more thing that i want to say is uh, that uh, you people might have learned uh, some new ways to Uh, generate the columns in the grid view and all that with respect to that dynamic results window uh, but in today's lecture i'm going to teach you uh, how can you create a uh, result with respect to a particular student and with respect to his or her subjects so let's start and have a look what we have today all right so uh, that's our home screen and let me first show you what we have done in the previous lectures so Uh, we are here in the result generation window and i have selected the class along with the section and the term number and then load so what is happening actually uh, the students along with its subjects that the particular uh, class holds are loaded inside a grid view okay but in today's lecture i'm going to change this whole scenario and convert it into an static uh, scenario for calculating the results so let's go and first take the backup of this particular window uh, if you need it later on and then we'll do the changes so first of all what you have to do you have to go to the code entire code you have to select and then you have to uh, copy it so uh, which window is this subject windows mark so uh, no not this window uh, we have to go on a window let us go to the results window that's my window uh, where the dynamic results are generating okay so we are ignoring this window for for the for the, for, for the current lecture uh, we are creating a new window for results so uh, what we need add windows form later on we'll delete the existing window okay no problem first i am creating a new window for static generation of the results so uh, results generation or you can write static results generation window okay so that you cannot be confused with the names and the software too so that's my window okay now go to its code and inherit your parent class that is sample 2 and then that's it in this window what i need i need to first call okay remove this remove this and remove this also now uh, we need the class we need the subject we need all these things so copy it and just paste it here okay so you have pasted it now what's next you need to change something here that is when you first of all you have to select the term for which term you are going to create uh, the result so select this as a first object from your window then you have to select the result date and then you have to select the class okay first move this label upward now it's fine then select your class and then select your section so based on this class and based on this section you are going to uh, load the subjects of that particular class so for that you have to copy this combo box and paste it here and give here name subjects okay so where are subjects here we have subjects now it's fine so what what i will do uh, based on the class selection i will retrieve all the subjects of that particular class okay along with the total marks of that subject also along with the total mark, marks of that subject also and what else you need uh you need when you want it to display the total marks what you can specify you can you can pick up a text box or a label sorry and write here total marks because you have already added added the total marks in the previous lectures in the subject uh, marks window so 
I just want to want to display the total marks of my subject in this screen. So what I need here, I need to bring a text box, and that text box should be disabled by default. Okay, and resize it. Now it's fine. So that text box. Now what you need? What else you need? You have to specify here. Um, after subject marks then you have to specify we need obtain marks so for that purpose copy this and paste it and put it here arrange it properly and then specify it here now rename it to what what you have to give your name obtain marks yes obtained marks that's fine so when you enter the obtain marks total marks are there obtain marks are there so the percentage and the grade should also appear there automatically but the problem is uh, when you select uh, the particular subject so the percentage of that subject only will calculate it so you only uh, wanted to uh, just store these marks and later on we'll calculate the total or the overall percentage of of these uh, of this particular student that we have to load okay so one thing that i have skipped still that is the student for which student i am going to create this result so i have to select the student also so for that purpose uh, before creating our subjects we have to specify the students as well so we have to copy the students of that particular class we have to bring the students here so uh, so that the things will go in a correct manner i hope you are uh, you have understood this so students now it's fine okay so students and then subjects and then instead of student you write student because at a time you are selecting only one student so then subject so it's also at the time you are selecting one subject and then total marks then obtain marks and then one thing more you are you are required to add here is the remarks okay so create a label give here remarks and take a text box and paste it below and make it multi line it's mode to multi line and make it a little bit wider and then the load so that's the load button is not required now so i am going to remove this load button okay so on this window load what do you need you need the term and if you see here you have term 1 term 2 term 3 final term and all that uh, do we have this term uh, in the database so guys uh, instead of writing these terms here you have to make this term combo box blank because you have to load these terms from the database also and in the previous lectures we have created the term table as well and we have inserted the data in that also so uh, then th that the result date then the class we have to uh, load it and we have to select the sections and then the uh, based on the class selection we have to select the students and then uh, based on the class selection we have to select the particular subject so let's do this uh, let's first rename the results generation window to a specific beautiful name now it's fine and remove this s now it's fine so double click on your uh, window and now you are in load so first of all what do you wanted to load your, your terms so where are your terms first of all you have to create an object that is my db data context obj equals to new my db data context and then you have to specify obj sorry not here uh, you have to go come inside and you have to write obj dot uh, get terms do we have terms let me check retrieve terms so no we don't have the terms stored procedure let us verify it in the database programmability and then stored procedures i think i haven't created the stored procedure so let me open the new window so guys uh, we have the get terms method then uh, we have to ensure that make sure that uh, do we have that uh, get terms inside my dbml so let's check so uh, that's our data source sorry we have to go to the server explorer so uh, view and go to the server explorer where is my server explorer here we have the server explorer I open it and it is asking me the password so re enter the password save it okay now it's fine so stored procedures 
and we need what get terms so here we have get terms look no we have get terms already added also so we don't need to add it again so let's go to the code and we have to write here obj dot get terms okay why it is not appearing here so let me check okay so the problem is i am entering the wrong name so st underscore get terms <coughs> okay now it's fine so how should you uh, load this in the inside a combo box let me copy the code from this results window that we have created in the previous lectures let's go to this method load list go to its definition and copy this particular code copy it and come here and paste it here so where what are you loading a uh, class in the class drop down and then you are loading the section in the section drop down and then you are loading the term in the term drop down okay so all the code is there already so i don't need to call this get term method simple what i need to do this i need to do here is the load list method on on load you have to load this load list method okay so on load you you will receive the term along with the class and then uh, the the section also so first of all what i do here class drop down dot selected index is equals to minus 1 so that the list will become empty by default or you can use the zero index also and copy it and paste it that's for section so copy paste and term is already uh, minus 1 so let's start and open this window where on the results window so let's go to the home screen and results and instead of results window i'm going to open now results generation window and then copy it and then paste it and then start all right login and then results on load you are having your terms from database okay you are uh, okay these controls are disabled by default so let me enable it by clicking on the add button so do we have the add buttons and all that uh, let's go to the uh, uh, results sorry uh, where sample 2 window and open this and copy all these okay once and then go to your results generation window and paste these methods here and what do you want to do you want to uh, replace this virtual with override in the current document so yes replaced now what's the problem no there is no problem now on add button you have to make the enable code so uh, where you have to go close this window close this also go to your results uh sample 2 should also be closed that's my results window so where is my add button here is my add button so copy this and paste it here now edit variable should be created integer edit integer edit is equals to 0 by default now it's fine so in this window uh this thing this thing this thing everything should become disabled by default so enabled false everything is enabled false now what you have to do when you click the add button it should be enabled okay but uh, when you click the add button this uh, uh, obtain mark should not be enabled okay so what you can do you can uh, on the add button you can do it like this you can write here which what is the name of the text box that's the total mark so write here name total text and then specify here total text dot enabled enabled equals to false because after resetting we will again make it false so that this text box should not be enabled so let's start and check so this that's the design of the static part of the result generation window login result look everything is disabled when you click add terms are there classes are there based on the classes we have sections also 
optional these are then now the class that you have selected and the section that you have selected based on that you have to load the students okay and then based on the class that you have selected you have to load the subjects and then the total marks and then the obtained marks you have to enter total marks should also be fetched from the database and all that so uh, and then the remarks so what I need I need the total number of students with respect to class so do we have that particular stored procedure get students with respect to class let us check yes get students with respect to class and get students with respect to class and section we have this so uh, let us uh, copy it and find in the software we have where do we where do we have that particular method stored procedure in the software so control F control V and entire solution and search it look here I have called this particular get students with respect to class so copy it and where you wanted to display here in this window so when class selection is changed if class drop down dot selected index is not equal to minus one then come inside and write this stored procedure so variable student let's guess is get students with respect to class only and then the class uh, ID will be fetched out and then the data will be converted into list now what you have to specify you have to specify the combo box that is the student drop down so you have to give it a name student drop down that's my student drop down and come here and write here studd dot data source is equals to student list okay and then you have to specify uh, the display member and the value member so uh, what you have to do you have to write here studd dot value member is equals to and here you have to specify your value member and then you have to specify your display member so display that's fine spelling is now correct so what is what should be my value member let us open this and check I wanted to store the ID of the student inside value so the student ID is this so ID copy it and paste it here in the value member and then we have to display mem we have to display the name so copy it and you have to specify the name of that student so let's see when when we select the class the, does the student come or not login results okay look the problem is there because our combo boxes are data bound because our combo boxes are data bound so whenever the data bound code will run the by default index of the combo box becomes zero it will not become minus one so that's what the case look here the selected index is zero by default because on load you have data bounded the combo box and when the combo box is data bound the selected index becomes zero automatically so for that I am I am giving you a trick that you can specify what you can do you can write here a variable like this okay so, and uh, what you can do you can come inside and write if chk is not equals to zero if chk the value of chk is not equal to zero then execute this code by default on page load the value of chk will zero i hope it is clear to everyone okay so this this condition will not run simple as that so how, when when this condition will run when you come in this particular class so when you come in this class which which even should be uh, occurred so focus enter so let us come in the focus center and write here chk is equals to one simple so when you come inside the class drop down the focus when you when the when the focus is entered on the class drop down the value of chk will become one and of course it will not equals to zero and then this code will uh, about to occur okay i hope it is clear to everyone so now let's uh, check what's the result login results add look the code is running and no uh, errors were there 
when you select the class okay first check the students no students i have when i select the class 5 or class 4 do we have student no when we class select the class 5 do we have the students no still we don't uh, have the students so we have to verify it why the students are not appearing okay so uh, for that purpose let's go to the code and what's the problem here we have to make mention so let's check what's happening so um when i select class 5 you are come in and chk is 1 because focus is entered and then uh ignore that message execute and then the list is there and the count is 0 so why because the class id value is 6 do we we have the students at class 6 the list is zero so we have to check it why the results are zero let us give here class id so the class id is 6 and execute so the so look results are not appearing let us go to the uh, classes and sections let us check why this is not working let's go to the section and classes so uh, edit so these are my sections and let's go to the classes and edit okay so the section id is not there so we have the joins inner join classes i have joined with the admission okay so class id along with the class id it's fine okay where section id is null i think that should be the thing i must check it no it's still not why the data is not appearing uh, let us check the uh, admissions table we have inside the software so admissions and edit we have the students there and the class id is we have two students yes and the section id is two yes that's the problem we don't have the students with respect to only class we have the students with respect to class and section that's why the data is not coming so that's fine uh, we are we are on the right way so don't worry about these things it is common so what we have to do we have to specify uh, <coughs> the data is not coming no problem then what do you have to do you have to select the section and then uh, based on that section selection uh, the student should load okay so double click on your section drop down and write here if section drop down uh, dot selected index not equal to minus 1 and and okay first of all give this condition then if class drop down dot selected index is not equal to minus 1 so if the class is not equal to minus 1 then what you have to do you have to uh, call that this particular thing so copy it and paste it here and what you have to write get student with respect to class and section so class underscore section and you have to specify the section id here as well so let me apply comma and now what it is asking me the section id so convert dot 2 integer 32 and then specify section id so section drop down dot selected value dot to string okay now it's fine save it okay so let's check what are the results now login results add term 1 class is 5 nothing happened when i select section a look the students are appearing okay now it's fine but what do uh, you people might have noticed what was happened look nothing is appearing when i select class 5 and then when i select section a automatically bilal is selected so it should not be happened 
okay so what you have to do you have to specify again uh, when the student list you have to specify the uh, you specified then you have to make it selected index equals to minus one so that it becomes zero then after students uh, selections are there now we have to load the subjects with respect to class okay so we have already this method get subjects with respect to class yeah okay so uh, we have to copy it and we have to control f and we paste and find where do we have this method get subjects with respect to class okay this is the thing that we have so copy it and go to your results and go to your class change come inside this and this so get subjects with respect to class here you have subject drop down no uh, what is the name uh, we i think i haven't give it a name so let me give here a name that's my subject drop down oh ho subject drop down now it's fine and then these errors are clear get student get subjects will be run when i run the program let us check all right so login results add the term the class let me select the class 5 section a students are not selected automatically then i selected bilal and then the subjects of that particular class is appeared i hope it is clear to everyone now what do you have to specify you have to select your subject based on this subject selection its total marks should appear and then you have to enter the obtain marks and then the remarks okay so every time you have to only change the subject and its total marks should be uh, displayed and you enter the obtain marks all other things should be uh, remain static you you won't change these all the things so what you can do you can specify the remarks first and then you can um okay no remarks should be in the end it's fine so based on the subject selection we have to select the obtain marks we also have the procedure get marks get subject marks okay so uh, let us check it what's inside this so what i'm what i'm doing select marks okay where subject name is equal to this and the class id is equal to this we have already this stored procedure from the previous lecture so copy it go to your code control f control v entire solution check it where it is okay here we have so look i have called this here and the subject marks are uh, stored in this particular variable so i'm not i'm not going to store in this the variable i'm just copying it and based on this subject selection if subject drop down dot selected index not equal to minus 1 then you have to specify this and you have to make mention here the total text dot text is equals to then this is the marks and what what is this uh this is the name of the subject that you have selected so how can you select uh subject drop down dot selected item that's it the two string should have to be there so now fine but i think that it will generate an error because uh uh because uh this selected item Uh, is used for st uh, static fields that you have entered and we have this subject drop down as a data bound column so if the problem persists we'll use some other way i know what is that way but first of all resolve this error because the you are uh, returning the result in double so you have to make sure that you have to put it in two string so two string okay marks dot two string that's fine so now your marks will be displayed inside the total text so let's check login results add term 1 class 5 section a okay look again that that's the problem uh, you have to make mention here 
CHK also. So for that, uh, just come inside and write here CHK not equals to zero. If CHK is not equals to zero, then do this. Okay, now it's fine. Uh, but the problem is you have to create a CHK two because uh, CHK when you when you select your class uh, when you select your class the CHK will already become one. Okay, so what do you have to do? You have to create another variable an integer CHK two. CHK means check. That's as that's only a random variable. So CHK zero CHK two is equals to zero. So CHK two. So when you focus enter on the subject, uh, let us go to the focus enter of this. So focus enter here we have. So on focus enter, what you can do CHK two is equals to zero. Why I'm doing this? Because by default the control is data bound and it is selected. Uh, in its selected index is zero by default. That's why I'm doing this. Okay, so it should be one. Now it's fine. So when the focus is entered, the CHK two become one and it is not equal to zero, and then this this code should happen. So let's start and check. So login and results, and then class five, and then section, and then the student, and then then the subject. Look, based on then subject, the marks are still not there because it is saying that uh, the data is not coming. Look, what I have mentioned, you have multiple items. You have multiple items here. So what you can specify, you can go and write here data. Raw view. That's the class. Drv equals to um, subjects drop down dot selected item as data raw view. You have to do like this, and then you have to specify your drv here. So drv of. So what do you need here? You need the column name. So the column name is column number two. So let us check what is the result now. Uh, what it's saying is saying me to okay. Let me stop it and check it. What's the error now? So drv dot to string. Okay, now it's fine. So let us check. Don't worry about the length of the video because uh, this is programming and you have to uh, quality assure your software. Uh, until and unless the client will uh, become uh, frustrated uh, on every time the software will crash like this so all the iterations you are doing this time will will uh, increase your quality uh, uh, in the uh, deployment phase so uh, class 5 and then section a and then student and then subject biology chemistry no it's, it's still not appearing still the problem is you are having the blank the class value is there and then drv2 what do we have inside drv2 it's null okay why let us check selected item do we have selected item yes we have selected item here so the name is subject subject drop down it is saying that it is empty it is null why let me check the results are there what i have selected chemistry Yes, I have selected chemistry. The chemistry is coming here, so it should be picked up. Let me write here subject, save, and now check. One more thing we can do: we can specify the ID of that subject. We can specify the ID also, and ID can be fetched easily. So let us first verify once again, and then we'll check. So class. Five, section A, student this subject biology. Yes, it, it's the problem remains the same. So what what we can do? Because I know get subject marks. Uh, I have I have called this method uh, inside the previous window of the dynamic result generation. So what I can do here? Instead of subject name, I am passing the subject ID equal to subject ID. Okay. So instead of this, you can write here. Sub ID at the rate, and it should be integer. If I am not wrong, let us check. The subject ID is in 
integer yes it's an in it's integer so now it's fine integer okay so class id and then the subject id and then execute it so i have uh, altered this stored procedure now what i wanted to do i, wa I just wanted to pass i don't want this and instead of this what i can do i can specify the subject drop down dot selected value simple dot to string okay so instead of uh, this i have applied this but we have to update the procedure so what is the name of my procedure get subject marks so we have this get subject marks so delete it and go to your server explorer and refresh it and select your get subject marks here we have this get subject marks right so pick up this get subject marks but remember you have already used this method inside this window get results window this this window i am going to obsolete okay so i am not going to use this window uh, but when error come uh, we will uh, we'll comment out that error no problem now convert it to into two string so convert dot two integer 32 and then bracket open and then the bracket should close here okay now it's fine let us now check uh, the subject marks are appearing or not based on the id of the subject look the error is because we know uh, we have used this method inside this results window so let us ignore this and make it comment and save that's it because we are going to obsolete this window results window dynamic window i'm not going to use this window now so that's why i have commented that we'll delete it later on uh, results add and then class 5 section a student then subject chemistry the marks are appearing alhamdulillah so it's fine so let's select english or chemistry okay whatever marks you are going to select look the marks of that particular subjects are appearing here okay now it's fine now uh, how much marks the bilal uh, secured let's say 56 and then the remarks okay these remarks are global you don't have to enter the remarks every time just enter these things and then at the end you you can enter the remarks and if you wish to enter the remarks subject wise then you can specify that also okay so it's up to you uh, how you can use that so finally after all such effort we have designed our window and now what we have to what we have to do we have to add these records inside the database okay so uh, I, I, we should have a table inside which we have to store the class id and then the subject id and then the uh, what and what what else we have the the obtained marks and then and then the other things okay so and the total marks all as well so let's create that table we have a table with the name results so we don't need that table just create a new table so that you cannot be confused create table results results table i am giving a different name and then results underscore id big integer not null identity primary key then result underscore student id for which student i'm going to add this result okay so result so student id is big integer and then it should be not null foreign key we have to create two tables one is for result details and one is for result foreign key so foreign key and then references oh, oh, why i'm doing so much spelling mistakes references okay now it's fine references and then to which table i should reference it admissions so admissions and then it should be ad underscore id that is the student id and then on delete cascade 
on update cascade i hope it is clear to everyone now the next step okay close this properties window so that you can be able to display the complete query now it's fine uh, now uh, after student id uh, what else we need because this the overall uh, result table so the term id should also be there term id and it should be integer let us verify it in the terms table so where do we have the terms table so here we have the terms table and the id is tiny integer so you have to specify it as tiny integer and not null and then foreign key because this this is also my table so copy this one and paste this one so if somebody wants to delete the term the terms table and then the id is t underscore id so what will happen when somebody wants to delete the term let's say someone deletes the term one all the term one results will be deleted if you wish to do that then stay with this settings but if you don't wish to do that on delete then right here no action because that's a massive loss okay so i'm i'm going to do this with no action so no action if somebody tries to delete the term and its, its results are there so it, it cannot be deleted okay now the term id and then the obtained marks obtained marks float and then you have to make it not null you have to make here total marks float and then sorry not null and then you have to specify a computed column uh, that is uh, result underscore um, percentage you can calculate the dynamic percentage how let's let me show you so data type is okay you need to specify data type as then you write r underscore this column this one copy it paste it obtain marks divided by copy it paste it multiply by 100 so what do you have done you have specified okay i don't i do you don't need the data type yes now it's fine so what will happen when these two data will be entered inside the database the total marks and the obtain marks automatically the percentage of that student will be calculated simple as that okay so that's it uh, that we have to do inside this table so that's my auto generated column what else we need we need the date of the result also so r underscore date that is the date and now it's fine and it should be not null okay now you might be thinking that where are the subjects so for subjects i will create a separate table uh, for that result details okay so one thing you have this you have this you have this but you don't have this you don't have this so what you can do you make it null by default or if you are making it not null then the default value is zero in this and the default value is zero in obtain marks and in total marks by default okay so first time when you press the save button the value sh should be stored like this i hope it is clear to everyone then when execute this stored procedure this table sorry and now create a separate table for that uh, for the subjects also so that your data should be normalized so create table result details as sorry round brackets so result details underscore id that is also big integer not null identity primary key and then result underscore result id result detail underscore result id that is should not be big integer and this should also be copy it and paste it so the result id that is generated in the above table should come here as foreign key paste it and in, instead of this copy this paste it 
and the id is this copy it and paste it so when you delete the result the result details will also be deleted i hope it is clear to everyone now after result id you can specify rd underscore subject id okay and it should be integer not null because you have subjects so you have to make it a foreign key the relationship between them copy it and paste it instead of this you have to write subjects okay the name of my table subjects and then it should be sub underscore id i hope it is clear to everyone now uh, on delete cascade on update cascade so when you are going to delete the subject all the occurrence of that subjects will be deleted okay so if you wish to make it no action you can specify no action so result details you you have you have taken the result id you have taken the subject id and then what you have to need you need rd underscore student id okay which is student which subject okay so student id and it it is big integer okay we don't need a student id why we don't need a student id here because look you are you have picked up the result id and in and that result id has this this result student id so you don't need actually the student id i hope it is clear to everyone based on that result id i will fetch the student details simple because this result id is unique there okay i hope it is clear to everyone so that's what uh, so result id and then the subject id and then what else you need you need to store the obtain marks so rd underscore obt marks that are float simple we have to add just this data total marks are there already in the database so we have to store only this data not null okay now it's fine so result details subject id result id and then the obtain marks that's it now uh, it's saying that this uh, table is already there result details so give it a name because we have done the dynamic work also so results details table now it's fine now uh, is there anything that should be uh, uh, happened with the constraint work also yes we have one student term should not be added again and again the result of a student with respect to that term should not be added so you have to add the constraint so what you have to do alter table results table add constraint uh unique underscore what student and term so give it a name appropriate and then give a keyword unique and then what columns you are going to make unique in combination so student id and r underscore term id so the student with the same term will not be entered again i hope it is clear to everyone okay what else do we can we can do that okay all things are now set so uh, execute this as well so that's completed do we have to add something here yes the subject the result id and then the subject id should not be repeated again if one student with the result id 1 and the that particular subject let's say english is entered then again that english will not be entered on that sub on that result id i hope it is clear to everyone okay so we have to add a constraint here as well so copy it so these are the security constraints guys uh, alter table results details table copy it paste it and what you are going to make unique here give their names for future references so the subject and the result id so this should do be unique so copy this result id so the result id is there and then copy it and then paste it subject id so uh based on this result id every student has its own unique result id i hope it is clear to everyone okay and uh the subject id is there so when you change the student the result id will be changed i hope it is clear to everyone the subject id remains the same okay fine so that's it so execute this command successfully now uh, what we have to do we have to we have to create the insert stored procedure so let's create it insert into the results table insert 
into results table values and then you have to specify the stored procedure so create procedure st underscore insert results table as what you need at the rate student id that is big integer then at the rate term id that is tiny integer then obtain marks that are float then total marks that are also float then uh, you need date so date that's it so uh, based on these you have to specify uh, the column okay but look that's the computed column and it is coming in between that's a computed column and that is coming in between so uh, what you can is you what you can do you can refresh your tables list and results table right click so my right click is taking so much time i don't know why okay so uh, edit not edit results table and design and what you can do you can move this computed column at the end okay so so that it will not generate an error on runtime right so put pick up and put it at the bottom okay that's my percentage column save it all right so my table is not uh, giving me this error uh when when i am going to save this result because uh when you are using sql for the first time it have the security feature by default so go to tools and then click on the options and then go to its designer and then uncheck this prevent saving changes and then click okay so that your table will be saved okay now it's saved it's fine now so close this close this also now what you wanted to do uh you wanted to enter the um at the rate student id so student id then at the rate term id then at the rate obtain marks and then at the rate total marks and uh, then you have to specify at the rate date okay let us check this query is executing i think it will generate an error no it will not because that is my computed column so i don't have to pass that computed column okay so these are the things that i have mentioned so after that insert details we have to create a procedure for that also so let us copy this and paste it here create procedure insert result table details and then specify its procedures sorry parameters so result id result id and it should be big integer then you need the subject id it should be integer and then you need the obtain marks so om obtain marks of that particular subject okay so uh, what you have to specify um, float as insert into result uh, what is the name of my table here is my table so copy it and paste it and then values and then specify at the rate result id then at the rate subject id and then at the rate obtain marks okay so let us create this procedure as well so commands completed successfully now one thing that you need uh, is the id of that particular result so create procedure st underscore get result table id as select top one from result table rt and can you write here rt dot id um, order by rt dot id descending so what will happen uh, when you execute this procedure only the last id of the result will be fetched out only the last id of that result will be fetched out and why you need that last id because you 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 wanted to store inside another table 
I hope it is clear to everyone. And one more thing that you you can specify is uh, the result ID with respect to that student. Okay, the result ID with respect to that student and with respect to that term also. So you can specify that. So let me do that. So at the rate term ID that is tiny integer and at the rate class ID that is integer okay so select top one this and from results table and specify where RT dot term ID is equals to at the rate term and RT dot um, student ID okay so student ID is equals to at the rate student ID we don't need to mention class here so at the rate student ID and it is big integer okay now it's fine so alter it because I have already created so based on that student and then, then that term the ID will be fetched out okay uh, I haven't created that procedure so <laughs> copy and sorry select and execute commands completed successfully now the ID of that particular result will be fetched out now what else we need to do here that's it that's all from the database side all right so uh, I have uh, one thing that I have skipped again I have I haven't select the order by so alter it and then copy it again now it's fine okay so now let's close the window and let's go to the uh, coding part and finish this whole stuff the lengthy stuff so close this results window we don't need this now for the any more results generation window here here on the save button uh, we have to apply validations as well okay I'm not going to apply validation right now I'm just going to uh, add the code and later on we'll apply the validations okay so you have to go to the save button so on save where you are where is the save button here is my save button here what do you want to specify you wanted to specify the procedures so first of all go to your dbml and zoom it out uh, people uh, students are asking me to provide the ERD look in every tutorial I am going to display this ERD okay so that's the whole ERD of the uh, school management system how more can I show you along with the relationship if you wish to see it in a more precise manner you can look okay you can copy it you can take the screenshots now it's fine let me take it here now I wanted to add further pro further tables uh, my two tables uh, let me select that tables first the result details table that's sorry uh, the results detail table I have added and then the other table should be uh, results table okay so I have added these two tables inside my DBML let me bring it here okay so now it's fine so these the relationships are already there save it now the stored procedure um, insert result table uh, where is result table I think that my procedure name is uh, insert results table yes so uh, it should be there insert results table where is it I think I haven't executed it let me refresh right so I have refreshed now insert results table that's my first procedure and then insert results tables details that's my second procedure so two tables I have added two stored procedure I have added now get what was the procedure name um, what is the name of yes get results table ID so get results table ID I have to pick up that also get results table ID so that's fine now come here and write the code so first of all you have the obj right so obj here obj dot insert result details insert it's it's not coming so st underscore insert result table okay first of all I want to insert the result so student ID where is my student ID so convert dot to integer 64 and when you are selecting the student so the student drop down dot selected uh, value that will be the ID of that student and then dot to string 
Then the next thing I want to pass is the term ID. So convert dot two integer sixteen because that is a tiny integer, and you have to specify here uh, term drop down dot selected value dot two string. Okay, term ID is picked up. Then the next thing that you okay at this that's the byte. So you have to convert to byte. So convert to byte. That's fine. You have to confirm the data types. So now what's next? The obtain marks. Do we have the obtain marks? Right now we don't have the obtain marks. Okay, this is the main results table. I don't have any obtain marks. So if you wish to leave it blank, just give your null because that's the nullable data type. And then write here null. So when you enter null, what will happen? It will store the default values that are zero zeros. Okay, and then uh, the date and time. So where is my date? So my date is in the picker. The name of my picker is results date picker. So uh, results date picker dot value. Okay, that's it. So uh, after executing this procedure, what should happen? Uh, you have to pick up the result ID that should be in big integer. So integer sixty four um, result. ID. You need to that fetch that result ID after inserting the result. So what you can do? OBJ dot get st underscore get results table ID bracket open. What it is asking me the term. So the term is here. Copy and paste. And then what? What else you need? The student ID. So the student ID is here. So copy it and paste it. And then you know that you have the single results or so single or default, okay. And then because you have the uh, result in this integer uh, 64, so dot look result ID, it is appearing and it is in long, so that's it. So what will happen? Look, the result ID will be fetched out and stored. This is the link, guys. We have followed link throughout this whole software up till now. Right, so result ID I have fetched. Now, what else you need? You need to uh, perform the next operation. That is obj dot uh, st underscore insert result table details. Here you have to specify the result ID. That is this one, and then you have to specify the subject ID. So convert dot two integer thirty two, and then select your subject from subject drop down dot value. Dot selected value. Dot two string. The subject ID is picked up. Now uh, obtain marks because you have now obtain marks in the obtain text box. So you have to specify convert dot to single. Sorry, to single, and then specify your obt text. Obtain text. I haven't given the name. I think. Uh, what is the name of my this text box? No, uh, yes, I haven't given the name. So right here, O marks text. Okay, and the length of this should be how many digits should be enter? Let's say four, not more than that. Okay, and then uh, save everything, and then come here and specify O marks text dot text. Okay, so whatever the marks should be will be converted into float, and then uh, this will occur. So now, what you can specify? You can specify try catch inside this try catch. You can put this all, and then cut it and paste it. In the in the, in the exception, you have to specify ex, and then the main class dot show message. Okay, and then it is asking me the message. So ex dot message, the exception message, the heading that is error, and then the message type is error. Now it's fine. Now uh, you need to specify um, the particular what can I say uh, the validations of this window. So this is my class drop down. So let me uh, give your class error label. Yes, it's fine. Copy it and paste it. So I will apply the validations. Okay. So right now because the time is too much. I'm 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 skipping this part, the validation part. I'm just gonna check this: uh, is this working or not? Okay. And one more thing that I have to specify is uh, using transaction scope. That's my transaction, so that 
my all three tasks should do in a uh, sequential manner and properly if any of the task got uh, an exception uh, then uh, the other tasks that are executed will be uh, roll back so sc dot complete now it's fine okay so transaction scope you need to add this system dot transaction now where was i here was i yes so copy and cut it and paste it here so that's my transaction after doing this after the transaction is complete you only need to clear the subject the particular subject and then uh, the the obtain marks of that if you wish to clear okay if you wish to clear and one more thing that you wish to you can do that that remove the subject from that list remove the subject from that list so that you can uh, you are unable you you can be able to know that you have entered this subject you have entered this subject you have entered this subject after saving so what how you can do that after inserting the result of that particular subject you can remove it from uh, subject drop down dot items dot remove and then you have to give the value so you have to remove the value so subject drop down dot selected value let's check uh, this will this item remove or not okay so and then when this is removed uh, you have to clear the obtain text so o marks text dot text uh, is equals to blank okay obtain marks um, and then uh, the subject is empty so subject drop down dot selected index is equals to minus 1 i have only resetted the subject that's it i hope it is clear to everyone now let's try and finalize this later on we'll apply validations or you can do it by yourself no problem login results add the term is 1 the class is 5 the section is a the student i have skipped the section in the results that's a, that's one problem we have to do sections as well so okay we'll do that let's say i'm selecting biology the obtain marks are 87 and then the remarks i am skipping the remarks and i haven't ticked the remarks in the table as well so that's another mistake so you have to take the remarks in the database columns also the remarks i think i haven't pick up pick take that remarks let me check do we have remarks no we don't we we haven't ticked the remarks also so that's another mistake so after so much efforts you still have are doing mistakes so that's what software is okay so leave this remark and then click save it is saying that cannot insert null and obtain marks so okay the problem is in the insert results so let me go and enter their zero actually i thought that i have entered the default value so the problem is here so enter zero zero by default no problem let's check once again build succeeded now admin results add the term id 1 class id 5 section is unnecessary right now bilal and then biology and then obtain marks and then save okay no error message is displayed okay because i haven't displayed a successful message so let's go to the database and verify do we have these tables the results so right click on your results table and edit all right guys so when i have opened this results table it is saying that divide by zero cannot be happened because i have entered zero zero so it could not be uh, happened because you have this percentage column computed column so how can you tackle this you cannot insert zero also so uh, for that purpose you have to come inside your software and instead of zero your obtain marks let me i'm i nobody can take one marks okay so by default the obtain marks and the total marks are one one okay so one divided one by one is possible so now that's fine 
but one more thing that you must con uh, must check that's the result details table and verify that is there any data so right click okay look so that's my results table and the data is there already so I don't need this data so remove it I don't know why transaction when hasn't worked but uh, transaction will work uh, when you have any serious exception the logical exception now uh, there was no logical exception from the c-sharp code that's why transaction haven't rolled back now let's check because we have entered one one login results add term one class five section a student biology 70 marks save okay no errors now let's go to the results table and execute it so where's my execute button okay reopen this table now, now let's check what is the result all right so it's, it's it's still saying me that you cannot be able to enter the zero because let me go to the table definition first and then that column definition and you have to remove that default so obtain marks right so uh, instead of this zero you mention here one the default value and the total mark should also be one the default value now save this and now let's verify uh, uh, is the result inserting or not uh, refresh it uh, execute SQL and delete this record also and now let's add once again so subject is biology and then obtain marks are 60 and then save ok it's saying that results are already there uh, right click execute close this table close this also and result table open it again right click right click and edit look it's still saying that you cannot uh, divide by zero so um, I think I should remove that auto computed column okay obtain marks are there total marks are there but uh, it's still saying me that you are dividing it with zero so uh, I think I should stop here because it's it's too much time uh, but uh, I, I hope you have understood how you can store the marks okay so we'll discuss it in later classes in the next lecture also in uh, that how can you resolve this error uh, I think the length of the video is too much uh, so I am I should stop here so we'll continue this in the next video. Thank you so much. Take care. Allah Hafiz.